All right, so we're really talking about in section 1.4 presenting uh, scientific data. So in order for news to be useful, it must be reported in a clear, organized manner. Like the new scientific data um, become meaningful only when they are organized and communicated. Communication includes um, visual presentations such as this graph. So now if we look at this graph, it's clear to see that as time increases, distance increases, right? So just take a second and look at that. Now you can make trends and you can make predictions, but the data is clear and organized, okay? Um, how do scientists organize data? Well, scientists organize their data by using tables and graphs. So we record a lot of information and then we'll have to use that information, but first we have to, or we have to uh, record it. Because in the real world, if I measure everybody's, if I measure everybody's um, height, I'm not going to measure it in order. The first kid might be shorter than the next kid, but then the next kid might be in the middle. So it's all random. I have to organize it so I could go from shortest to tallest. Does that make sense? So data tables is the simplest way to organize uh, data to present them in the table this table relates two variables a manipulative variable like the location and the responding variable annual uh average annual precipitation so this one is just saying buffalo new york has 98 centimeters of rain on average chicago has 91 Colorado Springs has uh, 41. Look at San Diego. San Diego only has 25. And that's it, it's just organizing data, not in any specific way. Now line graphs are useful for showing changes that occur in related variables. Sometimes in a stats class we'll say there's a mathematical correlation or something like that. Um, in a line graph, the manipulated variable, sometimes in math referred to as the independent variable, because it's arbitrary, you could change it. It's generally plotted in the horizontal axis, this way, or what we are used to calling the x-axis. And then the responding variable, sometimes in, in a math class referred to as a dependent variable, um, is plotted on a vertical axis or the y-axis, up and down. Now, you guys, if you've had Algebra 1, you know that slope is the rise over run. And the rise over run is nothing more than the change in y over the change in x. The steepness or slope of this line is the ratio of the vertical change to the corresponding horizontal change. And again, there's the formula slope is equal to rise over run. Plotting the mass of water against the volume of water yields a straight line. In other words, my slope is constant. I'm going to go up 5 over 5, up 5 over 5, up 5 over 5, meaning my rise is 5 and my run is 5. If you reduce that ratio, it's just 1, up 1 over 1. A direct proportion is a relationship in which the ratio of the two variables is constant. It forms a straight line. This is exactly what we uh, discovered in our reading today, right? So the relationship between the mass and the volume of the water is an example of what we call a direct proportion. It will have a slope. The rise will always be 5. The run will always be 5. Okay, that's what they're talking about. Um, 3 cubic centimeter sample of water has a mass of 3 grams, so on and so forth. Now, this graph shows a flow rate of a water faucet's effects the time required to fill a one gallon pot. Well, as the flow rate increases, what do you notice about the time it takes to fill the pot? It decreases, but it's not a straight line. Okay? So this one's not direct. This is what we call an inverse proportion. That's how you get that little curve. Okay? So 0.5 gallon per minute will fill the pot in two minutes. One gallon per minute will fill the pot in one minute, and two gallons will fill it in 0.5. There's a, you could look at it like that, too. So direct proportion, straight line, 
inverse proportion kind of has that curve thing going on. Faster than uh, the faster than speeding data. Um, a modem is a device, and you guys probably don't even remember what modems are. That just goes to show how old this textbook is. But it, it sends and receives data. That's how your computers communicate. Okay, a modem used to send it over the old phone lines. Now we all have the Ethernet and uh, Comcast and uh, stuff like that, but or Wi-Fi. But for example, an upload and to upload an image on a website, your modem in your computer converts the data of the image into a digital format. Uh, and then the converted data is sent over a telephone line or a cable TV line. The smallest unit of data that can be read by a computer is a binary digit or a bit. The bit is either zero or one. Computers process bits in larger units called byte. A byte is a group of eight bits. So here, this table just basically shows that if you have a faster modem, your upload time can decrease significantly, right? So if you have Comcast, it would take you like four seconds to upload a megabyte. But if you had the old school 56K dial-up, it would take you 160 seconds to upload uh, a megabyte. So this is very funny because Mr. Adams is older than you guys, but back in the day, you used to have AOL. And when you loaded a web pay, a website on AOL, it would take forever. It would just go, mm, like it would, it was, it was funny because you'd only see the top part of the website and it would take forever to, for the whole page, like five minutes for you to see the whole page. Um, all that's changed. So using graphs, basically, you use the data in the table to create a line graph. Um, this is the graph of this is the graph of this data. So you could think of this as the x value and the y value. So you plot the point forty eight point one sixty seven, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Actually, um, it looks like they did it backwards. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. So they made this the Y value, and they made this the X value. Inferring. How would doubling the data transfer rate affect the upload time? Well, doubling the transfer rate would half the upload time. Um, a bar graph is used to compare um, a set of measures, amounts, or changes. So if you take this data, it's not as easy to see as it is here. Same information, same data, but we could see Tallahassee gets more rain than all the other cities. We can also see very clearly that San Diego gets the least amount of rain. So that's the benefit of a bar graph. Over here, it's just information. The application for this is, hey, I live in Chicago. I'm curious, what does Chicago get? 91 centimeters. But in this one, the application is, which one gets the most rain, which one gets the least rain, and how do they stack up? Um, when it comes to organizing the data, circle graphs, as we just talked about, represents the proportions. Oxygen, there's way more oxygen on the Earth's crust than any other thing we have. The next thing is silicon, and aluminum is next. So there we could clearly see how much of the stuff we have in the Earth's crust. So how can scientists uh, communicate experimental data? Scientists can communicate the results by writing in scientific journals and speaking at conferences. So <clears throat> this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, like a poster symposium where you just have a poster and a bunch of people come by. Now, this is a high school one, something that you guys will do at least once in your life or maybe in college. But it's just you do some research, you put together some information, you stand in front of your poster, people come by and ask you questions. So you're presenting the data. Um, peer review is a process in which scientists examine other scientists' work. They just want to make sure that everything is correct. They also give ideas to scientists to figure out um, uh, if there were mistakes or other ideas that they could explore. Um, but based on the peers' responses, the scientists who submit their work 
for review can then reevaluate how best to interpret the data. They want to make sure that they're putting it, and sometimes they'll just say you should word it like this or word it like that. Um, and then we're not going to do the assessment questions for now, okay? Are there any questions? Okay. That's all I had for you guys today.